Montessori culture is one of the most interesting areas. Children are fascinated by it and there are so many ways that you can incorporate um, more learning, variations, extensions, writing activities through their interest in culture. And over the next few weeks, I'm going to be taking you through a series of very simple culture activities that you can actually prepare and carry out at home. In fact, we have all of these materials available for download. You can uh, buy them and download them. I will share the link in the comments in the description box below so that if you would like to buy these and use them at home with your children, you can do that. So the first material that we are starting with, what, what I'm going to show you today, is called the phylum chordata. And what we're going to be teaching the child with this material is the different animal species, about reptiles, about mammals and birds, and what is it that actually uh, tells us that this belongs to a mammal group or this belongs to a reptile group in a very hands-on, in a very interesting, in a very interactive way. And then, once we're done with the presentation, I'm gonna give you some ideas of how you can extend this and do this in different ways because children love this activity. So let's get started. Hi, Anna. Hi. How are you doing today? Good. So today I want to teach you about some animal families. We're going to be using a material called phylum chordata. Okay? Okay. Now, tell me, have you seen this animal before? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I did. Mm -hmm. What's it called? A horse. A horse, right. And do you know what it has on its body? Hair. It's hair. And if you touch this animal's body, it's warm. We call it warm-blooded. Can you say that? Warm-blooded. Now, if you see any animal that has hair or fur on its body and it's warm-blooded, it belongs to a family called mammals. Can you say that? Mammals. Mammals. Now, do you know any animals like that? That you Cows. think are mammals? Sorry? Cows. Cows, all right. What else? Pigs. Okay, anything else? Chickens. Mm, chickens have feathers on their body, right? Yeah, how about cats and dogs? Cats and dogs. Yeah, what do you have? Hair. Hair, so you're a mammal too. Me too. Me too. Can you keep this picture of the horse here? All right. Do you know what this is? A bird. Right. What do birds have on their body? Fur. They have feathers. feathers. Yeah, they have feathers. Have you seen feathers before? Yes, I saw birds and they have brown feathers. All right. And do you know what this is called? Peak. Yeah, it's called For a eating a bird seed. That's right. It's a beak. And what is this on the side of its body? Their wings. Yeah, what do they use the wings for? For flying and catching some food and going to their nest. Right. Now, when you see an animal that has feathers on its body and it has a beak and wings, it belongs to a family called birds. birds. Right. Do you know any names of birds? Mm. Parrot. Right. And you just said one to me a little earlier. Chicken. You know Chicken. That? Chicken. Anything else? Mm. Okay, we'll learn more about birds, okay? okay? Can you keep this picture here? All right. Have you seen this animal before? Reptile. Oh, right, but what is this? It's an it's a crocodile. Crocodile. Yeah. Do you know what crocodiles have covering their bodies? Mm. Spiny. Uh, we call it scales. 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 And if you touch this animal, the body is very cold. We call it cold blooded. Cold blooded. That's right. Now, if you see an animal that has scales on its body, and it's cold blooded, it belongs to a family called reptiles. Re That's right. Do you I know any reptiles? These. Do you know any reptiles? Yes. Apart from the crocodile, what? Frog? Mm, frogs don't have scales on their body. What about the slithering one that's really long? Do you know? Snake? Yes. Have you heard of Komodo dragon? No. Okay, that's another reptile. Can you keep it here? Okay, do you know what this is? A fish. Where does it live? 
in the sea. Can it live on the land? No, if it lives on the land, it will die. Right, it can only live in the water. Do you know what these are? Fins That's for swimming. Right. That's right. And do you know a fish breathes with gills? Yes, I know because mm -hmm. I learned about it. Okay, now, when you see an animal that has fins and it can only live in water and it breathes with gills, it belongs to a family called fish. fish. Do you know any names of fish? Sharks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, whales. Mm, okay. Anything else? Dolphins. Okay. All right. Can we put this here? All right. And finally, do you know what this is? A frog amphibian. It's a frog, right. And where do frogs live? Uh, they can live on land and water. That's right. And when you feel their skin, how does it feel? They feel like slimy. Yeah, it's really and slimy. And I saw a frog in my apartment. Ooh, okay. Ew. And their feet. And it was peeing in the... It was peeing in the tennis <laughs> court while it was jumping. <gasps> Now look at their feet, okay? The toes are joined together. We call them webbed feet. Webbed feet because they're really slimy and webby. And they're stuck together. So when you see an animal that can live in the land and the water, and they have webbed feet and slimy skin, they belong to a family called amphibians. Can you say that? All right. Do you know any other amphibians apart from the frog? I don't know. Have you heard of a toad? Mm, a toad is like is a frog. It's a, f a family of frogs and amphibians. Can you keep it here? And now, I have some pictures here and I want to see if you can match them to these, okay? Okay, so today we worked with the phylum chordata. We learned about some animal families. Do you remember any of the families we learned about? Yes. Which ones? Amphibians, birds, reptile, fish, amphibians. And this one? Mammal. Right, okay, so we're going to put this on the shelf. And anytime you want to work with it, you can do that. Okay? All right. Do you want to look and match the word cards? Yes. Okay, there you go. Let's tidy this up and we can use it another time. Thank you. So while this activity looks really simple and there isn't too much, maybe somebody might feel that the child isn't learning that much, but this is a springboard. From here, we start and we branch off into different areas. For example, in the coming weeks, you'll see how feeding off of this activity, we go into learning about one specific group wherever your child's interest may lie. Perhaps they're particularly interested in birds. So we'll go forward and explore actual pictures of birds. Once they have done that and we can see their interest is still there, then we go even deeper and we teach them something more specific about birds, a, a particular group of birds, perhaps birds that cannot fly. And what do we call them and what kinds of birds are those? So you can go deeper and deeper and deeper as far as your child would like to go, following your child as we always do in Montessori. Now after we've done this basic activity, what we can do is give the child uh, maybe pictures of animals or models of animals and we ask them to look at the features and match them into their groups. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in this upcoming activity where we work with models of animals. So Anna, you remember we learned about all those different animal families? Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you tell me what they are? Fish, reptile, bird, mammal, amphibian. Now I have some models of animals. I want to see if you know which group they belong to. Okay? Um, what do you think this belongs to? Okay, what do you see on its body? Yeah. It's got the fins. 
this? Snake. Where do you think it goes? Which family does it belong to? It belongs to reptiles. Right, can you put it there? And do you know what this animal is? Bird. Do you know what kind of a bird it is? It's an eagle. That's right, okay. And do you know what this is? Cheetah. Okay, what do you mammal. think it is? It's a mammal, right. Why is it a mammal? Because it because it has four legs and it can, and it has a backbone like us. Mm -hmm. And what does it have on its body? Fur. Okay. And how about this? What is this? Frog. Amphibian. Right. Do you see the webbed feet? Yeah. How do you think it feels if we touched a real one? Gross. <laughs> Slimy, right? Yes. What's this? What Chicken. Of, where does it go? Bird. Okay. And. And how about this? Lizard. Yeah, this is a chameleon. Where do you think it goes? Okay. And what is this? A fish. Right. And do we know what? Stunk. Okay. Eel. Where does it go? It's backboard. And what does it have on its body? Fur. Okay. So where does it Fur belong? Mouth. All right. And we have this guy. Okay. This one. Fish. Okay. Do you know what this is? Bird. What kind of bird is it? Do you know what we call parrot? it? Parrot. It's a cockatoo. What kind of parrot? Cockatoo. This? Okay. What's this? Mm, what is that? It's a squirrel. Yeah. Yeah. Where do Fluffy. you think it goes? Which family does it belong to? Fluffy. Okay. And this one? Chameleon again. It's a lizard. Where does it belong? Which family? Reptiles. Okay. Do you know what this is? Ostrich. It's a stork. Stork. Where do you think like it a... goes? Mm -hmm. Looks like a bird. Okay. And... Kangaroo. Oh. I think that's a kangaroo. No. Mm. It's like that one from Lion King. It has a backbone. Mm -hmm. yeah, no. And the last one. A little baby tiger. Where does it go? With the mommy. Okay. So, anytime you want to take these animals and match them into their family groups, you know where they are. Can you help me to tidy? Now, if you go back and notice, you will see that each of the species is mounted on a different colored card. The border is different. We have a very specific color coding for Montessori culture. Anything that relates to mammals throughout culture will be mounted on red card. Uh, fish will be mounted on light green, amphibians on purple, reptiles on brown, uh, birds on light blue. Though you don't see it here, but it does come up later, we have insects on yellow and mollusks on white or gray. And so even if we go on later to teach the children the parts of an animal, which I will be presenting later, uh, you know, in the coming months, it would be on light blue. Or we do have some videos that I've uploaded before about um, the parts of animals, which I will link over here for you to have a look at. Um, and those are mounted on the appropriate color. Even if we go on to teach life cycles, we would go with this same color coding. Now this material, we refer to it as terminology cards, but they are also referred to as nomenclature cards or sometimes even three-part cards because there are three parts to the card, as you can see in the diagram over here. Now I'm going to give you the measurements, I'm going to show you the measurements for this so that if you choose to make this at home, you can go ahead and uh, use the pictures and it's very easy to make. This is what we call the control card. Now the control card is 4 inches by 5.25 inches. The width is 4 inches and the length is 5.25 inches. Over here, you will see the picture card. The picture card is 4 inches by 4 inches squared. And finally, you see the word card over here. 
The word card is 4 inches by 1.25 inches. Now when we put the, the picture card and the word card together, the word tag together, they will reach the same measurement as the control card as you can see in this picture. Now this is easy to make as I've said, it really doesn't take much work but sometimes if you don't have the time on your hands and you would really like to get started and use this material plus a lot of other materials, you can head to our website. I will link it in the, comma, in the description below. You can click on that link, you can copy paste it and you will be taken to our site where we have a whole load of materials from culture, from language which you can purchase and download, print it, laminate it and you're ready to go. You can get started teaching your children, working with your children with all of these beautiful materials. Children absolutely love, love, love these materials. They're drawn to wildlife and animals, so it's very interesting for them. And then you can get them to do some writing that's related with it. You can, you know, encourage them to care for pets and things like that. There's a lot you can do with these materials. Recently, I've been getting a lot of comments where people have been asking for more and more materials to be presented, more and more videos. Now, you know, it takes me time to get this out. I get it out to you in bits and pieces. And for those of you who'd really like to learn it, you know, in sequence, in order, and, um, you know, be able to use it and learn about the benefits and have lesson plans and things like that, you can join one of our courses. We have either the full diploma course where you get certified, but if that's not something you're looking for and you need something faster, where you don't have to do assignments, you're not looking for a qualification or a certification, you're looking for something that you can use at home with your children, then we have those too. We have short courses that require no assignments, no projects. It's just watching videos like what I'm putting out for you uh, every couple of weeks. Um, it, they come with lesson plans as well, detailed lesson plans with photographs and step by step of what you have to do. You can pick the subject that you know you need to work on now with your child or what you feel is most applicable to you. Could it be math? It could be language, it might be culture. You can pick up any course that you feel ready to learn and you can work on that. Just watch the videos and you can be working with your child on the go as well. So I will link that as well in the description and you can head on and see to our website and see what we have available. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the phylum core data. I have a lot more coming up for you in the coming weeks related to culture, some language, some math. There's so much for us to learn together. Uh, so hit that notification button, subscribe to this channel. And if you have liked this video, please do show me some love. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.